Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today we're looking at another DIY NAS enclosure here. This is from UNAS. This is the NSC 410. If you've been searching the highways and byways of the likes of AliExpress and Amazon and any of those websites where you're trying to get all your components to grab them all together to build your perfect DIY NAS solution because you don't want to give the big guys all of your bunts, then chances are you have seen this enclosure. This is um, this four bay solution. It's a desktop four bay all tray equipped solution. Doesn't include your mobile, doesn't include your CPU does actually include some of the cabling and it includes a power supply as well um, you can get a 150 watt power supply version internal flex psu or one u flex psu internally for 140 dollars or go up to 250 uh, watt for 150 dollars and if you look online you can get hold of this casing for around about 75 to 80 nicker um dollars if you will um for uh, with no psu included but I do recommend going for the PSU version, notwithstanding because it arrives pre-installed for you, but also, and I'll mention this later on, Flex PSUs, are, I'm not a big fan of them, personally. Understanding more compact solutions like this um, Mini ITX case here, it makes sense, but I'm still not a fan of them in conventionally just buying them off the shelf. But, I'll get to that later on. The box is super generic isn't it i mean it has mini server written all over it and even when i go around i can't actually see the word unas anywhere uh, if we open it up inside we've got fairly standard stuff we've got a box of accessories here and we've got the solution itself that's there fingers crossed none of this is coming through on the mic this feels safe doesn't it there we go, we've got that there, got ourselves some hard foam, lovely snuff, good bit of protection. Again, I would argue this thing's better protected than a lot of the pre-populated solutions in terms of hardware, uh, and motherboard, CPU, that sort of thing. Uh, finally, we've got the word UNAS, we've got ourselves some branding on there, and I think a number of you have probably already wanted to highlight while I'm doing this, that all too often we see not dissimilar enclosures arriving from multiple brands listed on the likes of you know um, eBay and Amazon and uh, AliExpress because generally there's a hardware manufacturing plant and then they're getting rebadged. Now, I'm not gonna say whether that is the case with this, but a lot of what I'm seeing here does indicate that that might be the case. I will also add that I did already unbox this to take some photos for the written hardware review link below, and the outside was covered in a plastic protective film. So when you do get hold of this, it will have a, a peelable plastic layer all wrapped all around it to protect that matte metal finish there. And again, metal enclosure. We'll get to the design later on there. Um, if you little look inside, here is our box of accessories. So let's have a cheeky little look. We have um, cable ties there. We've got screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media included. Um, we have the plate here for installing a two and a half inch SATA drive on a side panel. And I'm looking forward to sort of talking about the inside here because in terms of spacing and cavities, there's actually a lot more you can play with in there. We've also got our mains cable, of course. We've got the screws for that OS SSD tray. And we've got a Molex splitter there for the back panel there because of the ports that the PSU arrived with, depending on the MOBO and the fans you might want to swap out. And we've got additional screws there for replacement screws for the external casing. So that's really all you're getting in terms of accessories. I will say it's, although it's not exactly exciting, it's pretty much what I would like to see in a case like this because everything else is going to be inclusive of the device you're getting. The PSU is internal, so there's no external power brick there. And although these aren't click and load trays, uh, you're at least being given the screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. But let's take a look at the case itself. So if we have a look at it there, that is the UNAS casing. Again, we've got that shiny matte finished metal all the way around. We've only got the one area of ventilation there, and that is not going to be um, um, anywhere but above where the CPU is going to live. More on that when we open this bad boy up. Um, again, if you look at the top, 
you've got these additional USB 2 ports here. And again, that is built into the front panel header connectors as well. And that's actually quite nice to have. Not only, obviously, the audio in and out, something we see more and more on these DIY solutions and very rarely on turnkey solutions. But on top of that, they're on the front, an additional USB 3. That is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port there, so 5 gigabits per second. But on top of that, not only have you got a power port, but they've also got a USB copy instigator button there. And again, the NAS OS of choice that you're going to opt for is going to make a vast amount of difference because not only is the MOBO, the MITX, that you're going to run with inside this going to have to have the relevant uh, connectors for that F panel, but on top of that, if you have to use adapters or whatever, you need to know that the OS you're going to utilize can actually take advantage of that physical button there isn't just going to be a case of that uh, reset button there's no lcd panel there it is branded there on the front if i bring that closer to the camera there i'm sure there's been some close-ups throughout this video um i don't know how i feel about those trays um because on the one hand they're pretty sturdy looking trays if we open those up they're not oh they are spring loaded there at the top and they are metal trays and again, you do have your screw holes for two and a half inch. They're quite bland and generic, if I'm honest. Um, I think my main issue with them is they're not lockable. I kind of would have liked to have seen lockable trays in this system, particularly because it's rocking kind of a slightly dated look. I would say this is very circa 2015 idea of what NAS chassis would look like there. But there is an absolute ton of ventilation through there. And although there's no ventilation on two of those panels and there's no ventilation on the base of the system, I will say that ventilated panel there is quite well placed. And I do like those additional USB ports, the two there and the one there. Now, if we remove each of those trays we could take a good look at the connectors inside uh, and these are both sas and sata connectors obviously that is going to be quite dependent on your own setup but even inside that it's quite a clean access point all the way in there and you know not really much to complain about plenty of ventilation in every single direction all the way around there and those trays do go in quite cleanly um, all the way through there now, the, the casing measures at 263 millimeters by 195 millimeters by 197 millimeters. So it's a little chunkier than some of the NASs we see here. So, for example, if we look at this one, this is the um, QNAP TS464. And they were rocking a near identical chassis to this back in the day. And as you can see there, there is a big disparity in terms of size in practically every single dimension there it's even i would argue just a little thicker as well so between them on these devices you can certainly see a lot of the scaling down that has happened in more modern now solutions like that one but you have to factor in that that's rocking an intel celeron processor there and a lot of its architecture although custom made at the factory level the components they're going for their cooling and ventilation isn't quite as important as if you go with a lot of standard class MITx boards going into this although MITx boards are a lot smaller there's still a lot more you can pack in in terms of hardware and particularly the CPUs you can look at them for that you're going to need that serious bit of height and the active airflow going through so although it seems like a chunkier case I'm prepared to give them a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt there compared with some of the more compact four and five base solutions in the market which are already rocking smaller internal components and therefore active airflow considerations can be minimized accordingly now if we look at the rear of the device we've got that large fan there that is a 120 mil uh gelied silent fan as well not an opportunity to test it inside this case this is just a hardware case review uh, we've got that one uflex psu there i believe this is the 250 watt model i'd have to double check there but still it's going to be the same scale of psu you get inside there if you go for one of the two populated models and of course we have a full height um um, I said today width actually PCIe card slot there and indeed although the depth of it is not going to allow you some of those hyper length cards there there's still a decent amount of height to play with there so overall I quite like it you can definitely see where that nice little um, MIT export is going to slide in quite neatly there overall and as mentioned earlier on you could probably already have made it out a lot of the cabling is included with this because there's often 
an overlooked factor to grab myself a screwdriver. When a lot of users go down the DIY NAS route to build their own system from scratch, there's so many of the little tiny things that get overlooked. Now, there is obviously, as mentioned earlier on, when it comes to the F panel, you're either gonna to have to make sure that the F panel connectors inside the case are gonna be compatible with your motherboard of choice, and there are adapters out there, of course. And as we're not dealing with any USB-C or USB 4 or Thunderbolt connectivity here, we're not gonna to to worry too much about those F panel connectors. But what I will say is when it comes to SATA connectors and power connectors in a, a pre-made MOBO uh, a NAS case, that's when you tend to find people making tiny little errors, whether it is that they get the wrong power connector SATA rather than Molex at the very basic level, or getting the SATA multi-lanes, non-angled cables, getting cables that don't fan out right, or cables that are splitters rather than fan out cables. Let's slide this out. That case put up a hell of a fight. Um, as we can see, there is our outside. I will say, that feels just a little thinner than I thought it was going to be. I understand they've got to maintain temperatures, but when I see a metal case like this, I always think the metal case has a dual purpose as heat dissipation there. And this is just a little thinner than I was expecting there. That kind of caught me by surprise. Um, if we have a little look on the inside here, and again, anyone that's, by the way, been dealing with DIY cases for a while, always take a look at their hands. Absolutely carved to shreds. Um, but inside there, we can see the cavity that our MITX board is going to live within on a side panel there. Um, so it's going to be sitting up right there. The CPU fan is going to be around about here. Um, and again, in terms of cabling, you're absolutely spot for choice. Not only are the SATA connectors already pre-attached to the rear of that SAS SATA plate there, bear in mind these are SATA cables, uh, but they're already tied in as well. So you're not gonna have to worry too much about fiddling around with a lot of those elements. On top of that, we have got the additional cabling there, obviously for the LEDs, the power on off switch. Then we've got the additional cabling there for those USB 2 ports. Then you've got the additional cabling there for the rear fan. Again, everything is kind of pre-ready, good to go with cable ties included and a lot of those screws and some of those adapters. Going back to some of those adapters, we can see here with the um, PSU connector that we've got a decent bunch of connectors there. We haven't got any Molex, hence the need for that Molex adapter, but what we do have is a couple of SATAs. We've got the main uh, ITX connector and a couple of those four grid ports there as well. So it has got a decent amount of spacing there for a four bay case. That PSU is ever so slightly out of alignment because that screw's a little loose. Put that back in there but that's really my only complaint about the layout there in terms of ventilation we've got absolutely tons to play with going through there into the back and more interestingly when you put your mobo in here you've got the standard angle there to go directly into that um pcie slot there at the top so when the card goes in here i'm sorry the mobo goes in here you're still going to have direct access to the, you're not going to need any, any kind of riser to get to that PCIe slot here at the top. But interestingly, once that's installed and these cables are in place, you've actually got a decent amount of space to play with there. Now, of course, as mentioned, you can go ahead and use that plate to have your 2.5 inch drive there living either just above or around the motherboard. But I would argue that with the right riser you could actually install quite a large m2 nvme card into that top level cavity and the ventilation that's running through it is more than sufficient and again this comes back to my earlier point when comparing a four bay case like this against that of a lot of tailored four bay cases in the market from turnkey solutions that don't factor in the additional ventilation because they don't need to this unfortunately is being built around the idea of that ventilation maybe being something that is needed now how that metal chassis and this extra scale and that internal PSU reflects in terms of operational noise, it's hard to say. I would say it's nice they've included at least a silent grade 120 mil, uh, millimeter uh, fan inside. And when you go to their website, the manufacturer, um, which again, we're going to say UNAS is the manufacturer here, but it could be a uh, rebadge. When you go to their website, they do have very detailed tutorials on building this. A lot of the PDFs they've got there really do break down into a great deal of detail about setting one of these up for the first time. Now, on the one hand, 
I reckon with a little bit more play, they could have factored in an M80X board. Perhaps, I know their 8-bay device that we're going to talk about on the channel soon does support uh, M80X, not just MITX. And I like that it includes the PSUs, but they, you have to dig a little bit to get this case without the PSU included. I know for a lot of you, who cares? And then back to that PSU. I'm not a big fan of flex PSUs anyway. I know they save a lot more space and in a lot of cases they're necessary. But still, there are plenty of 4-bay cases out there I've seen that use standard class uh, PSUs. They've just moved the placement of um, the uh, motherboard onto the top segment rather than the side. Yes, that does result in you needing uh, PCI risers and that coming up in a future video. Overall, I, say, I do think this is a very good case as a DIY case. And for the price point especially, it is. It's not out of this world. It looks a little dated. I'm not too sure about that metal panel there. It's good, but it's very, very thin. I like the additional USB placement there. And the one-touch copy is surprisingly rare to find on NAS cases. Um, I kind of wish they'd had a cavity, at least a pop-out cavity for an LCD panel here, perhaps, or even utilizing that uh, as a pop-out for a, maybe a floppy or um, not only really 5.25 inch, but definitely something where we could do a modular install, um, kind of uh, injectable drive there, ingestible even. Um, but apart from that, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing here. And if you are looking for a budget 4 bay case, this is going to be very much on your radar. It's been around for a while for a good reason. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. We don't really have any plans to build on this yet. As we go through some of the builds here in the background of the channel and release them bit by bit, they do take a bit of time to film. We may come back to this case in particular, but we're a little bit more interested in the 8-bay that we're going to be talking about on the channel very soon. But what do you think? Below there is a detailed breakdown of lots more close-up photography and video on this device linked on NAS Compares. Have you bought this case and you've got positive or negative experiences with it? Are you considering it? There are links in the description where you can get hold of this on multiple different websites, which obviously if you use, result in a small fee coming to us here at NAS Compares that allows me and Eddie to keep doing what we do. But apart from that, if you still need help with your DIY NAS solution, we've released a lot of videos on this recently, but you can go ahead to the description and find links to the Ask NAS Compares Community Forum the discord to talk to other community members in the nas world and you can head over to our free advice section the big blue button on the right hand side of the page over on nas compares to get free advice uh, and support from myself or eddie or use the ko-fi or patreon pages for expedited support our monthly seminar videos and content polls on future videos but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time